This is the original cluster out of my 1994 Toyota pickup. It's a two-wheel drive model. And this is the one that we're replacing it with. It's out of the Toyota 4Runner. This is the SR5 model, which has the tack, oil pressure gauge, also the voltmeters, additionally. Before attempting, before attempting to install your attack and even getting started at it, what you should do is disconnect the oil pressure sending unit. It's going to need to be rechanged with one from uh, an SR5 unit. I have an old oil pressure sending unit that I had on a different car, which I installed an oil pressure gauge, which I'm going to see if I can use that instead of uh, actually buying a brand new one. But this is the location of the oil pressure sending unit. I was trying to disconnect it and my wire was really brittle and you can see it just uh, came off so obviously it's not connected. And then I'm, now I'm going to go ahead and uh, start replacing, uh, getting to work on taking apart my dash and changing out the cluster. To get these out, all you need to do is you can put your finger back there, pop it out. Mine was a little easier because you can see uh, two little mounting tabs are broken on it. So do that to both sides and then you can pop this straight out. A little clip will pop right out of there. To remove the glove box, you have a 10 millimeter bolt. You have one screw down on the bottom of it. And you have three up top. There's one here, second one there, third one is there. There's a fourth one which is behind this, but that one is actually part of the radio surround piece. So once you remove these three screws, this one screw and that one bolt, you'll be able to take off uh, the whole glove box portion of the dash. The ignition surround piece, it just pops right out. There's two clips which you hold it in and you get a little pry, a uh, little plastic pry bar or something you can squeeze them behind there and just pop it straight out. In order to remove the lower dash panel, there's two screws which hold the hood release into this piece. Go ahead and remove those first. You can get them when it's directly, uh, it's located directly underneath. When it's on the, when it's still attached, you can get to them from right here. And there's gonna be four screws. One's a bolt, a little 10 millimeter bolt right here. There's a, a screw here. It's all screw, a screw right here, and then a screw right there as well. To remove the thermostat controls, I actually used a pick. You're able to pry, if I take all the knobs off, slide it in, you can actually pry it. You need to pry it from this end first because once you get it up, you'll see the AC button comes with it. It just slides right out. There's a little tab here which actually goes into that side so you can't technically pry from that side. And all these other little tabs which kind of hold on to the thermostat control. So a little bit of prying and you can remove that in order to remove the piece which surrounds the radio. And then that's when you can kind of pop out. There's a tab here. If you can't get it, use your pick or something that's angled again and slide it right in here. You can pop this portion portion out and there you go this is the last piece of the dash you need to remove I already pulled mine off but you can see there's a screw it's kind of hidden it goes right here it's actually hidden behind the thermostat control faceplate you need to take that screw off there's two up here one there and then when there. pulling the panel off make sure you disconnect the wiring for the dimmer switch and also for the hazards I already disconnected mine, but there's a little clip you can get the hazard disconnected, that way you can uh, remove the front bezel. And after you get the bezel removed, there's four screws. One, two, three, four. You can just remove all those and your gauge cluster will come out. And then I already disconnected it just to, for sake of time. There's going to be four plugs on the back of your cluster. Now before finishing everything up, after you have your cluster installed, you need to make sure your 
tachometer works correctly. Mine did not, unfortunately. I guess my truck wasn't already pre-wired for the tack. Let me start it and show you. Volts worked fine, gas worked fine. So did temperature, I'd already checked it. Uh, my oil pressure gauge is not hooked up uh, as per what I talked about earlier in the video. I'll get to that uh, next time I have a chance. Just wanted to get the tack installed. The main reason I was installing the, the cluster was because I changed my radio. I had a really old uh, cassette deck in here that I couldn't see the screen anymore. I just wanted to refresh it with an old JVC I had laying around with an aux port. So when your tack doesn't work, what you need to do, find the yellow wire on the distributor coil. I tapped into it, taped it up already. I actually soldered the wire to the existing wire. I ran it through where the, the hood release cable comes through. And you need to run it, run it to the back of the cluster housing. You'll see right here. I put a little uh, hook onto it. And it's the one where it says, I don't know what that signifies, but you'll see it if uh, you look at the front of your cluster It's right behind where the zero would be on the tachometer part So once you have that hooked up test it out There you go.